It is Sunday, June 22nd, and this is the Atheist Experience. Uh, we are being hosted, um, or actually sponsored, by the Atheist Community of Austin. And you can see their, web, their website at atheist-community.org. And we have a title for that coming up momentarily, I am quite sure. We have meetings every Sunday at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop on 307 West 5th Street. That's between Guadalupe and Lavaca. Uh, meetings start around 10.30 or 11.00. And uh, typically go until about 12.30, 1 o'clock. The uh, place actually closes at like 1.30, so we're usually the last ones to leave. Uh, that's every Sunday, except for the first Sunday of the month, where we have our lecture series at uh, the, not the Longhorn Room, uh, the Mayor's Room in uh, the Austin History Center, which is on 9th and Guadalupe. The next lecture is going to be on the July f- uh, 6th. Um, And I believe it's uh, Melinda Bagley speaking on uh, faith-based initiatives and the funding for that and that type of thing. Um, So that should be very interesting. Uh, Other things that we do as Atheist Community Austin is we have Godless Gamers. Every Monday night at Russell Glasser's house, we have Godless Gamers. We basically get together, play board games, role-playing games, card games, whatever catches our fancy for the evening. Uh, That's every Monday night at around 730 7 o'clock it actually starts, so 7 o'clock we'll say. Uh, Happy hour every Thursday night at Antonio's Tex-Mex, which is uh, on the southbound feeder of I-35, just south of 183. Uh, Every Thursday night at 7.30, people trickle in from 7.30, 8 o'clock all night basically. Uh, We have Atheist Happy Hour. Get together and drink and have fun. Um... All right, that's it for what we normally do. Um, Apart from our group, there's a couple other things that we do, though. Uh, We have the University Atheists and Agnostics. Now, it being summer, they're taking the summer off, so they're not having any meetings right now. It used to be on every Friday afternoon. Um, But if you want information on that and you are a UT faculty or student, contact uaa.mail.utexas.edu and uh, ask them what's going to be up in the new... The new semester. Um, And finally, we have the Nonprofits, uh, which is our internet radio show, which is every other Saturday. Uh, We just had one yesterday, and uh, I hear it went quite well. Um, We had Russell Glasser, um, Jeff D., Dennis, Louie, and yes, our co-host, Karen Glasser. So, um, that is every other sun- Saturday, and the next one is on July 5th. Um, so, thank you. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I'm Ashley Perry, and your host. This is Karen Glasser, our co-host, and Andy Roberts, our guest for the day. Hey. Um, we This is the live call-in show. We've been doing it every week uh, for the last about five years or so, um, and... We don't have any news. We don't have any uh, emails this week, but we do have a show email address. And so, typically, at the end of every show, there's a couple callers left on the line that we just didn't get a chance to get to. We're sorry. Um, but so, if you didn't get in touch with us, or you want to contact us, or ask a question, or yell at us, or whatever, you can write to tv at atheist-community.org. And every week, if we get a couple emails that are good, then we'll read them on the air and answer them. Um, We answer all our emails, through email at least. Um, But like I say, some of the better ones we'll actually bring on the air and tout out. So, okay. Uh, That is it for all of our announcements, I believe. And now what we're going to do is go over to Karen Glasser for today's or this week's news and edutainment. Okay. Hi. Good to be back on the show. I think it's been almost a year since the last time I was on the show. Uh, Ashley Has it was. Been that long? Yeah. Well, uh, it was last um, September, maybe. Right. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ashley was mentioning that our next lecture is yes. going to be about faith-based initiatives, which he also said they were talking about on the show last week. Yes. I don't get Channel Ten, so I don't actually get to watch the show most of the time. <laughs> uh, uh, today, uh, well, this week in the news, they had an article about Tom Cruise, uh, and uh, he he is a Scientologist, and he's trying to push for Scientologists to start dipping into some of this 
faith-based initiative money that's going towards <laughs> education. Um, I personally think this is kind of a good thing. It says, the Church of Scientology's top gun has been lobbying in the White House. Tom Cruise has been meeting with officials from the Department of Education and lawmakers at the White House, reports the Washington Post. And a source says he believes that Cruise is hoping to get government funding for, for the church. Um, this would be incredibly interesting if they actually get anywhere to the, with this, because I believe it's in France, is it? They actually have a law against uh, cults and how they how they go around and get members. And I think over there, Scientology is considered a cult, well, not actually a technical religion. Here in America, they're so. trying to define it as a religion, and <laughs> I think this is kind of a good thing, because... Uh, uh, Christian churches are always trying to get money from the government, whether it's yes. for their church or for education or for their faith-based social services programs. And uh, uh, if if that gets awarded to them, then I think by all means, every other religion in the entire world should have the same access to that money and not just Christians. Yeah. Um, the only trouble with that is then the government starts deciding what is a religion and what is not. Christianity, probably a religion. Scientology, Eh, probably a religion. Eh. Uh, Wicca? Eh, kind of that gray area. Buddhism? Well, there's no God. You so, see, is that a religion? Into the question, does the government have the authority to decide what's a religion, or do the people in that group have the authority to decide? So, exactly. there will be a big blow up in the courts about that. Exactly. Can Buffy all... fans of America decide that, you know, <laughs> the religion of Buffy? And of course, it so. all boils down to the wording of how the law is written, and they're going to try exactly. and do everything they can to, at least I hear now, they're trying to do everything they can to say that the wording of that law says you have to believe in a higher power, which means that we don't have any access to that money. But. So atheists, Buddhists don't get any money then. Mm -hmm. Buddhists don't get any money. Right. Based based on well, That's actually, right. um, in the legal sense, uh, the constitutional right to freedom of religion has been extended to atheists and not just, you know, religious groups. All those laws apply to atheists as well. So they would have so to. So we're not defined as a religion, but, but we're still but, given the freedoms of a religion. Well, not the the freedoms of or the, the religion, but they can't restrict us just because of religious basis. We okay. can't. Same. We can't be denied rights based on based on our religious practices or lack thereof. Yeah, which it's, it it's considered a religion as far that, as that. But, yeah, but it's been interpreted in the courts to say that. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. So, but anyway, they're asking for money now to to get Scientologists mm -hmm. are asking for money from the government to have their little funding thing. Did they say what they want to actually do with the money? Or is it? Because I know with faith-based funding, it's specifically like to open a soup kitchen or something. Um, um, do, do you know if it? <laughs> plain stupidity. <laughs> well, it says Tom is a big believer in the teaching tools of Scientology and has been has spoken in the past about how it has cured dyslexia. Okay. <laughs> do we have any evidence of this? Scientology curing dyslexia. Uh, okay. Alternative religion expert Rick, Rick Ross says, it looks to me like he's seeking federal funds for Scientology schools under President Bush's faith-based initiative. Okay, so he wants to start Scientology schools. Now, if that's not scary for you, I don't know what is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well. So I can imagine the Christians are falling all over themselves to try and say, hang on a second, that's not what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um... Moving on. Okay. In other news, um, there is a lot going on in the world right now uh, in terms of abortion. Uh, a lot of abortion debates are flaring up. Uh, the original Jane Roe from the Roe versus Wade case is becoming involved in in an attempt to overturn the Roe versus Wade uh, ruling. It says in Dallas, Texas. The former plaintiff known as Jane Roe in the 1973 U.S. Supreme Court case that legalized abortion sought to have the case overturned in a motion filed Tuesday that asks the court to consider new evidence that, that, that abortion hurts women. Uh, later on this week, there was a follow-up story that said that the court dismisses McCorvey's request to reopen Roe v. Wade, saying that she had 30 years to do it, and now it's just too late. <laughs> Um, Taking your time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real uh, interesting point to note is that um, uh, this woman, uh, McCorvey, uh, never did have that abortion that they were arguing about in the Roe versus Wade case because the case dragged on so long that it was too late by the time it was over. Wow. Okay. Um, 
And here in Texas, in uh, in abortion, uh, Governor Perry has signed a couple of new bills. I think this week about abortion. Oh dear. Um, he has signed one that uh, requires a 24-hour waiting period before a woman a woman can get an abortion. Um, this uh, he he says it is really empowering women to make informed decisions," said Elizabeth Graham, uh, associate director of Texas Right to Life. Opponents called the bill an attempt to deny access to the procedure. If it's empowering to women by making them an informed decision, chances are, I would expect, maybe I'm wrong here, that most women who are considering an abortion have already kind of looked into other options. In most cases, rather than saying, well, I have nothing to do between lunch and, you know, the end of the day, so I'll go get an abortion. It, but what it does um, is it makes them have to go to the abortion clinic twice and have to, to go get through the protesters. To get more lectures, and go through the protesters, go through the Christian places. Yeah, and Very there likely. have been uh, their waiting periods in other states, and it's been two years since I've read up on it. But uh, okay. in other states, what they do is they hand them Christian literature at these places sure. when they had to do mm -hmm. the wait. So yeah. it's just a way to try to... Yeah. Well, this goes actually into another story that we had a long time ago. This was actually several months back, if not maybe a year or so. Um, in some state, I can't remember exactly where it was, they had proposed legislation to say that if you want to get an abortion, you actually have to go before a judge and get a death warrant for your child. Wow. And that was actually what it took to get an abortion. Wow. And so basically, I mean, you just have to, you know, place yourself as I'm a murderer um, well, Ashley, we're well, not far you know, from that right now. So that's in fact, what, what happened. Do you remember what happened with that? I think it was shot down pretty quickly. I, w I would think it would be because, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but it the was out there. The what made the Roe versus Wade decision so you know monumental was it decided that it was at the end of the first trimester, second and third, it was actually a human in the you know sense that you okay. could be human. But the first uh, three months, it's uh, it's a fetus and it doesn't have human-like qualities yet. Okay. And that's why they can do it in the first trimester. Okay. However, <laughs> yeah. so, it gets worse. But they are trying to pass that again, is my guess, because further it says. Remember, I told you there were two bills that have gone into law now ah, that yes. Perry signed. Ooh. The other bill that the Texas Right to Life was pushing, which also won Perry's signature, uh, defines an embryo or fetus as an individual, and would enable persecution for the injury or death of an unborn child unless it is a result of a legal medical procedure carried out by a healthcare provider. Abortion is a legal medical procedure carried out by a health care provider. Yeah, well, that's what I thought, too. Okay. Well, this, this again, it probably goes back to the kind of things where they're going to have to have on all the papers that, you know, you are taking the life of this individual mm -hmm. and blah, blah, and just make you feel as bad about it as you possibly can. Right. Well, I guess somehow you, you, have, death to, you probably have stuff. to prove that you've gotten consultation with your doctor, that this is, yeah. uh, that you, ha you are making an informed decision. But I was questioning the wording of that sentence as well. Uh, and, and, uh, and wondering if uh, somebody suggested that I was talking to suggested that this might mean uh, some kind of self-abortions if you don't go through a doctor. And I was wondering if that might carry over to talk about how a woman can be tried, will be able to be tried for murder if she has a miscarriage. Hmm. If that could be considered murdering an unborn yeah, child. Yeah, because that's not so. exactly a legal medical procedure carried out by a health care provider. Now, it's going to be kind of hard to enforce that one. <laughs> Or maybe this but is just pre preemptive. It's involuntary manslaughter. Be, involuntary manslaughter. Would that? Uh, is there a time period on that, or is the second the egg is fertilized, it becomes an individual by this law? Well, it said to find an embryo or fetus. Embryo or fetus. Embryo sounds pretty early. Okay, well, you know, yeah. that's going to be the end of birth control there because birth control has an abortive quality if fertilization does take place. So. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be a uh, very interesting. <laughs> okay. So uh, now you you have to kill your individual <laughs> and uh, have a twenty four hour waiting period to do so. Yeah. Let's see how long that waits. That last. Yeah. Uh, that's going to go straight to Supreme Court here yeah. within the next couple of years. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have on abortion for today, but that's okay. that's certainly enough. <laughs> <laughs> We're sick of that topic now. Move on. Um, 
uh, uh, my next story says that there's a former Jacksonville deacon who pleaded guilty to a molestation charges. Uh, former, ba former Baptist deacon has pleaded guilty to molestation, uh, molesting three boys and faces up to six years in prison when sentenced uh, later this month. 45-year-old Stephen Edmonds could have faced 45 years in prison on the three second-degree felony charges of lewd and lascivious assault. He'll be sentenced in Duval County on the June 27th. He could receive as much as six years in prison. Edmonds agreed wow. to a plea deal yesterday. As part of the, that deal, seven other counts of lewd and lascivious assault charges were dropped. Wow. So they dropped seven. He he fessed to up get to three. Two kids. Or three kids. He well, fessed up to three and they dropped seven. Is it three charges on two kids or well, it three says boys? Ed, it, it, three boys. Uh, three boys. Okay. It says Edmonds was arrested in uh, April of 2002 after a 16 year old came forward saying Edmonds had improperly touched him twice in 2000 and sent him pornographic material over the internet. <laughs> after that, over other victims came forward. Edmonds resigned as deacon at First Baptist Church after his first arrest. He declined to comment after leaving the courtroom yesterday. God, these stories, they just keep rolling in. Mm -hmm. It's been, what, like a year and a half now since it started. Yes. And they're still rolling in almost on a weekly basis about some new guy that's either doing it or did it or is getting you know charged with it or something like that. But now they're putting yeah. together some kind of committee that, that uh, reviews cases of, um, of... But it's a Catholic church that reviews it, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> and then they probably take it, and then they probably, you know, uh, create, create their to own another punishment. Priest, exactly. They just bring them to another parish and don't tell anybody, which is exactly what they've been doing for the last 50 years. Rather than, of course, putting them in jail where they exactly. should be. Exactly. And kicking them out of the church. Let's see how well they get on in prisons. I don't think most prison people are very kind to child molesters in no. church. <laughs> they will become butt monkeys very quickly. <laughs> we can now. <laughs> okay. Then I had two interesting uh, articles that I found that were just about polls and statistics about religion and non-religion. The first one says, faith polls hearten secularists. Uh, they have been changing the wording of, of some of the questions in these polls, that, which formerly discouraged people from giving an honest answer. It says, one big question goes something like this. What is your religion? As a rule, few dare to answer none. Uh, but researchers at the City University of New York made a subtle change in 2001 when up dating their portrait of U.S. religious identities, they asked, what religion do you identify with, if any? A stunning 14% said no to religion, nearly 30 million Americans. Another question asked if respondents were religious or secular, and 16% chose secular. Wow. That's not bad. No. 16%. I think, I think before, most of them had come in at like 12 to 13 Mm -hmm. um, between 10 and 15 is kind of like the common bandied around, you know, uh, number, but usually it's coming on the low end of that. I guess that rewording and such up to 14 mm -hmm. to 16 percent. Cool. And another poll that I found asks an interesting question. It says, is it necessary to believe in God to be moral and have good values? Uh, in the U.S., 40% said no, 58% said yes, and 2% said don't know or refuse to answer. In Czech, 85% said no, 13% uh, said yes, and 2% uh, said I don't know or refuse to answer. In Kenya, 8% said no, it's not necessary to believe in God, to be moral and have good values, 92% said yes, and 0% refused to answer. And in Indonesia, 1% said no, 99% said yes, and 0% wow. refused to answer. So as far as we're concerned, we should all move to Czechoslovakia. <laughs> it's 85% that say you don't need the religion to be good, but Kenya's deaf or Indonesia is definitely not the place to go. Right, but here in the U.S., it sounds like, you know, it's close to 
half, so yeah, of that you half can still be. Um, and you know, this is what we're here on the show to to discuss. Exactly, people, is that we we can still <laughs> we can believe in God, and I mean, we cannot believe yeah. in God and still be moral people and have good values and ethics. Yes, we are shiny happy people, despite God yeah. <laughs> or lack thereof. Shiny, happy. At least that shows us that we're headed in the right direction. Yes. Yes, because one of the numbers in there I saw before the show, it actually went down pretty significantly between 72 and 2,000. Uh, the Cold War. About the, the, the yeah. number of people that attend church. Exactly. The number yeah, that attend church years. went down pretty significantly. Now, I'm sure that mm-hmm. spiked up again in 2001, oh, yeah. but then it's come back down but again. You see, so. we're, we're the post-Cold War stuff, a lot of yeah. bad things were said about atheists as propaganda against the Soviet Union. That's true. And so that's why we're we're starting to recover from that, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. The atheist, the uh, communist atheists. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, so. you know, they tried to pin <laughs> September 11th on atheists, too. Yes, and feminists, and gays, and... and uh, anybody who doesn't subscribe to... Yeah, Iraq. and anyone from Iran and Iraq, and anyone from... You know, <laughs> anybody who wasn't so. a member of the religious right, exactly. basically. Yeah, that, that was a big part of there it. There was another poll recently that what they were discussing on the uh, on the, the list, on the atheist list, yes. that... Um, that one that thirty percent of Americans believe that Iraqs were involved in the September eleventh terrorist attack. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they weren't people. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make that perfectly clear. Okay. So. Well, in that same study, wasn't there seventeen or twenty percent thought they found weapons of mass destruction in mm-hmm. Iraq? Yeah. Yes, it was another fairly high number. Right. So, so yeah, there is some miscommunication there between the news, but then again. That's almost to be expected to a certain extent because the news is very often, you know, having big he- big headlines of, mm-hmm. you know, we found this, we found that, we're doing this, we're doing that, and then two weeks later but when you think have... we've found this, exactly, we think we've found that, and then a couple weeks later when you find out, oops, nope, sorry, uh, they put that story in, but it's not front page, yeah, like the, the other back ones. Page. So people read the front page, not the back page, they get half the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but. Okay, um, this is a live call-in show. Um, if you want to call us up and talk to us and yell at us and ask questions for atheists, uh, you can call 477-2288. But we have yet more news, so mm-hmm. get on the phones, get dialing, and as soon as we get some calls, we'll take them on. Okay, and of course, everybody has been eagerly anticipating the fifth Harry Potter book. Woohoo! <laughs> we got our copy. I haven't started reading it yet, but I've heard that some people who have gotten it have already been halfway through the book in the past two days. <laughs> and uh, the Harry Potter books, I hear, of course, that this one is better than any of the others. Um, and uh, and the uh, Christian... Uh, groups have have brought out all their old sermons about there. mama don't let your babies grow up to be witches and warlocks <laughs> um, telling themselves in knots again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this article says that um, uh, the you know they, they they think that reading these books we're gonna we're gonna have a generation of people that are gonna grow up to to be witches and warlocks uh, extremists in South Dakota have burned have banned the books and in New Mexico have burned the books yeah. but what we see in this book is that there are deep and persistent messages about ethics and virtues manners matter uh, don't discriminate honor good intentions achieve your potential and do unto others as you would have them do unto you um, as well as various other, uh, don't use magic when you're not at school, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, the Christians are very much against all of those. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't put it in those words, but, yes, apparently they are. <laughs> uh, well, it also says the worst sins committed by Harry and his friends would pass for childish mischief in the much more threatening real world, and they are usually punished. The rest of their behavior, if emulated by millions of fans and young and old, would breed a generation far more capable of virtue than any we've seen yet on Earth. Actually, it was kind of interesting. Um, I saw this on the radio about a, a couple weeks back. Um, just got in the car one morning, switched on the switched it on, and I heard uh, who was it? Um, oh, the doctor, Laura. Laura. Schlesinger, that's right, Laura Schlesinger. Uh, very religious, very, I think she's Jewish. Um, but she had this little... Jewish convert. Okay, she had this little uh-huh. diatribe on there, which I eventually switched off because it was just annoying me to no end, saying that you have to be religious. You know, you can't possibly raise good kids 
and, you know, not have religion in their lives. And, you know, she said that she's heard other people say, I don't need religion, but, you know, let's get real. Let's face it. You, you have to have religion. I, I was just fuming. And so I said, screw this. Turn, turn, change channel. And then about five minutes later, I'm cycling through channels and I get back to her. And now she's talking with a caller saying something along the lines of a sign of maturity is being able to distinguish reality or being able to accept reality as it is. And I thought, how ironic that she is not accepting the reality, that there may very well not be a God. We are the atheist experience. We're going to talk like this. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> there's no God. It's reality. Accept it. You know, you're not very mature if you're not accepting that, according to her. According to her. So. And that's also ironic in the, you have to accept reality, but, so all these people who have been raised atheists that are good people just aren't reality? Exactly. Exactly. They're kind of proof that you can do it without religion. So many people in this group were actually raised, you know, with atheist parents. And most of them turned out fairly well. You know, from what I can tell. So Yeah, so she's the one not facing reality. <laughs> exactly, exactly. There's fourteen percent of the population that there are thereabouts that is atheist. And we're all doing fairly well. If you actually look at prison populations We're underrepresented. The, exactly. We don't have nearly enough atheists in prison. Uh, so. <laughs> I wouldn't phrase it like that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say so. it quite like that. But, um, yeah, we definitely... But yes, we don't we, mess up as much. <laughs> and, and Catholics, who are supposed to be the, you know, the uh, yes, very the, strict the, the Christians, ultimate. are the uh, most overrepresented po pr population in the prisons. Really? And going in. Now, that's going in. Coming out, I'd probably say it's Muslim, but they <laughs> convert inside a lot. Yeah, okay, I have heard of that, so... So that's very interesting. What else do we have? Well, I had two more stories, really. Um, okay. The Jesus box uh, that they discovered a long time ago that was supposed to be yes. uh, a, a relic. There was a box that had bones in it that said on the side that these were the bones of Jesus' brother James, Jesus' yes. half-younger brother James, uh, has... You know, they, they, they'd they already pretty much determined that it was a forgery and, and it yeah. was exposed as a fake. But now they have scientific evidence, uh, solid scientific evidence to back it up. Most scientists are are uh, rejecting that it has anything to do. Uh, they're still trying to prove whether or not it's a real relic. It just has nothing to do with Jesus. Yeah. From everything I've seen, it is an old box. It does date to the right time period and all that kind of stuff. It's just, yeah, the actual part, you know, brother of Jesus, mm -hmm. that little end part was just was later on added. exactly much later um, on different different dialect of the language different forming of the letters all this kind of fun stuff naturally the person who bought the box <laughs> for two hundred dollars and tried to turn around and sell it to museums and for historians million for millions dollars. and millions of dollars is still claiming that it's real well of course of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we've kind of assumed that that was a fake but even if it wasn't all that it would prove is that perhaps there was someone named Jesus walking around at the time. There were who, lots of people named Jesus exactly, walking were, around at that time. Exactly, which was, which was one of the things that they actually brought criticism about it before, is that the chances of having, you know, a family, you know, where the father's name is Joseph and the brother's names are Jesus and uh, James was like a 1 in 20 chance in but a city that Jews. large. Yeah. And so, you know, the chances of finding something like this are pretty good. Um, and also, even if it does turn out that it was actually the Jesus based on the Bible, it still just means that there's some guy trotting around and, you know, zero, you know, in the year zero, who said that, you know, who said some of these things that people are basing their religion on. It was based on a real person. Not that surprising. That doesn't mean that any of the claims that he did all these supernatural things is true. Exactly. Exactly. It's a book about a man's life. It doesn't prove that there is a heavenly father. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, one more quick story, and then we can go to callers. Okay. Uh, my last story is that there is a, uh, on Capitol Hill, liberal Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee Wednesday made known the latest target of their efforts to keep President Bush's judici ju judicial nominees off the federal bench. Alabama's Republican Attorney General William H. Bill Pryor uh, nominee to the 11th U.S. Circuit of Court Appeals. Um, 
Senator Charles Schumer described Pryor's pro-life and other conservative political beliefs as an unfortunate stitching together of the worst parts of the most troubling judges we've seen thus far. <laughs> He's uh, not biased, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, uh, Feinstein quoted from a speech Pryor gave in the 1997 graduating class at McGill Tulin Catholic High School in Mobile, uh, Alabama, the American experiment is not a theocracy. It does not establish an official religion. Um, yes, but the agree. Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States are rooted in a Christian perspective of nature of the nature of government and the nature of man. No, it wasn't. The challenge of the next millennium, <laughs> Pryor continued, will be to preserve the American experiment by restoring its Christian perspective. Okay, the American experiment, as he puts it, is to have a religion, uh, a society that is not based on religion, where the government is not based on religion. That was part of the American experiment. Yeah. The bill, the not the Bill of Rights, but uh, the Declaration of Independence was and was a war cry essentially to say you know let's you know down with the British um, and so yes there's a little more religion in that that has nothing to do with our laws though that has nothing to do with the history of this country well it has it, to do with the well, history yes, of it has country. to do with the history of the country but there are no laws that are based upon it and, and it has nothing to do with the foundations of our government it might have to exactly. do with our foundations of independence exactly but it doesn't you know it's not None of our rights, none of our... Exactly. That's all in the Constitution. And the Constitution does not mention God, only in limiting what the government can say or do or talk about it. Well, the, the, and then the year of our Lord. Declaration of Independence says something along the lines of these, these inalienable rights, which were given to us by God. Exactly. And he wants to bring us back to uh, those rights and back to God and back to what everything God stands okay, for, but which once includes again, having prayer in schools, which is one of the things yeah, he's pushing but, for. Oh, yes. But once again, yeah, the Declaration of Independence does talk about God, but it's not a legal document exactly. in, in the foundation of our government system. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a rallying cry, yeah. again. So it's to get people all excited and get them ready to, you know, let's kick out the British. Let's form our own country. Um, and so in that sense, it's good. And yeah, there's a little bit more religion in it. Um, you know, God did this, and God did that, and God save us, and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's no basis in, you know, legality there. It's, it's not a legal document in any, any way, shape, or form. So, yeah. whatever. Okay, it is now just after the hour, and we might as well go ahead and take calls. So we have Mark on line one. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Okay. Good day. Good day. Um, you guys were talking earlier about the uh, priest getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I just wanted to add a little anecdote. I have a friend who was at, you know, hanging out at a friend's house. And um, one of the people that was there was a priest. And he was basically just talking all nonchalantly about, um, oh, you know, one of my friends got into trouble with this boy. And uh, so far, you know, all the boys that I've been doing haven't uh, really... Um, I haven't been found out about it. And basically, you know, he asked, you know, the guy, uh, how, how can you be talking about it in this way? And it's like, well, you know, at least half, at least half of all the people in the clergy, you know, they don't believe in this stuff, believe in God or anything. They, they're just there because it's a good job. And, ah, uh, yes. You know, you are a respected member of the community, get yeah. to hear everybody's secrets. Yeah, I think they said one of the, one of the best ways to become an atheist is go through theology school. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, the old co-host of the show, David, um, who was on about a year ago or so, uh, he actually went to a theological school, a Bible college. Um, he wanted to, he was studying to be a priest, and uh, just through studying the Bible and such, he decided, nah, not really holding water. Um, so yeah, he he then went on to host and co-host the Atheist Experience. So, <laughs> so yeah, you want to be an atheist? Come come go to the yeah. go to church. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet deal. So, do you have anything else for us? Uh, no, just uh, you guys are doing a good job. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Bye. Thanks. Okay, yeah, uh, David was on about a year ago. He, I think he was on the show for about a, about a year or so. Uh, a bit less than that. It's been over a year because so. I've been involved with the crew for about maybe yeah, I think a year. In, and a half or... yeah, I think he started in like or left in the spring sometime. Yeah. 
uh, last so, year. Yeah, so it's been a little so, bit over a year. He left just okay. before I started coming. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, we got Mike online, too. How you doing? Hi. Okay, what you got for us? Uh, I, I wanted to uh, thank you for having such a great show. I think you're doing an excellent job. Um, I happen to be an atheist. Oh. The only complaint I have about the show may seem a little um, a little funny, and that's what I think that you're... You guys are too nice to Christians. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I think that they're arrogant. I think that they're cliquish. They're cultists. They are hypocrites. Yeah. They're uninformed, often very amoral themselves. <laughs> uh, they need a list of rules to be moral. I don't need a list of rules to be moral. I think morality is, is common sense. Yeah. Um, they're self-righteous. They think that I don't have a lack of wonder because I don't believe in the mystery of the one and only book. As though they're, you know, as though they aren't wonders like the cosmos, genetics, yeah. nature, medicine. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wake up with yeah. a sense of spirituality and wonder every day just looking at just looking at the beauty of trees exactly you know and exactly. the beauty of the human mind the beauty of you know the sky and, and where yeah. do we come from and, and 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 yet they feel that i don't have a sense of you know i don't have a sense of spirituality or, yeah. you know yeah yeah we um we've had different people who are who are coasting and co-hosting and hosting the show <clears throat> over the years and okay. stuff like that um, and they've all had their different approaches. Uh, I tend to kind of lean to be nice in the sense that uh, one is just a personality. I just, I, it's hard mm-hmm. to, to get me really riled up and start screaming at somebody. Um, <laughs> using my head as a prop again. Well, I, I'm, not I'm, not, I'm not exactly expecting that, but I think that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Occasionally we do get a little riled up and fired up. But typically the people calling in, um, they're not being mean to us directly, and so we don't do right. that back to them. We're trying to just explain our position and say this is why, you know, we do have wonder for the world, or this is why we can be moral, or, or whatever, um, rather than just, you know, blazing off on them. Not to mention <laughs> that, that I, I mean, naturally... I wouldn't want anybody to, I, you know, I get upset when other people say, oh, all atheists are evil for this reason, and here's my evidence to back that up, and yeah, I, I mean, kind of want to avoid that. I think a little too understanding. Yeah, well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being, um, you know, nice and gracious and stuff. And so I, have no, I have no problem with that, but I think that, you know, you're being a little too understanding. I really do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we usually try and explain our position enough to where that, that doesn't come across. So. We've, we've been called worse things in the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's it. Yeah, and that and that's part of it. Sometimes people watch the show just for five minutes, and if they can walk away from the show saying, "Well, yeah, they are. They're just pissed off atheists again." Uh huh. Um, yeah. You're just feeding that fire even more to where they yeah. can go back and say, "All the atheists I've I've ever seen have been really mean, nasty, I was, unhappy yeah, people." Yeah, I was recently involved in a group at, at my work. I. I planned, you know, social programs, and one of them was a discussion group on religion, and we had a woman from the Austin area interfaith ministries who kind of represents everything in town. They've got humanist groups, they've got Scientologists, they've got all of the different churches and and temples and stuff on their list, Uh, and, and they were having this really, really wonderful conversation until they got to the part where they started saying, yeah, you know, and all atheists are just such grumpy people, and they just don't understand <laughs> yeah. anything happy about yeah. the world, and they're always so miserable, and I just I just had to bite my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a hard one. Um, like I say, in a way, that's almost part of the philosophy, as in I'm always trying to be just, you know, as upbeat as I can. And just, you know, walking around with a smile and stuff like that. Because I want to make sure that if somebody comes up to me and finds out that I'm an atheist, which I'm very open about for obvious reasons, um, they're, they're, they cannot walk away from me and say, well, there's another pissed off atheist. Um, they, yeah. they physically cannot do that. Plus, and so, wh- plus, what's the fun in going around grumpy and being mean to people all the time? Exactly. As you yeah. said, there's so much neat stuff going on in this world. Jeez. There, right. There's other so. things to deal with instead of getting upset about little things. Yeah. Well, they have no so qualms about ostracizing right. uh, atheists. Uh-huh. What? They, 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 they have no qualms about ostracizing yeah. atheists. Yeah. Yeah, but do we want to stoop to that level? Yeah. Well, living in the middle of the Bible Belt, uh, you know, it's not easy to get on where you work if you want a board or, yeah. or you know, if you're, if you're part of a committee, if you're a the atheist, you know, it's very hard. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. They're, they're not under, they're yeah. understanding at all. Yeah, it, it, it can be. Not. It can be. You're really not. Um, well, you see, if if you're nice and you discuss it with them and you don't come at them in an angry point of view, if you're very polite to them, they're more likely to come around right. to your, you know, or at least accepting and helping. Accepting. Yeah. And that's that's what we're here for. Is is we don't want to we don't want to piss off all the Christians in the world. We want to <laughs> we want to inform them about who we are and what we're about, and that we're regular people and we're good people. And uh, if we just exactly. kind of, you know, talk talk dirty about all, all the Christians here on the show, then they're going to watch as it. As fun as it is at times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear that, listen to our radio show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the radio show has a lot of, it's, it's by atheists for atheists. And they're a little bit harder on that show. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got Jeff D on the radio show, so exactly. you'll get pre- a lot of Christian slandering on it. <laughs> okay, uh, do you have anything else for us? No, not really. Okay, well, great. Thanks for calling. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, and who's next? Josh? Okay. Josh, welcome to the show. Hello? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, I like the show. Y'all have some uh, really okay. intelligent conversation <laughs> and uh, just a change. You know? <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, I just want to make a quick statement. I was wanting to say, uh, first of all, all religion is psychological fascism. We must take our minds back. <laughs> we must collectively and peacefully dismantle the global elite, which have manipulated the masses for thousands of years. Research InfoWars.com. One love. Peace. Thank you. Peace out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Religion equals fascism. I would not normally put it quite in Well, that. he just quoted um, Alex Jones' yeah, his so. website. So. Okay, well, that explains it. Then, <laughs> uh, <so>. uh, <laughs> you know, I'm reading a book right now by Ken Follett, and the main one of the main characters in the book is a is a prior. Uh, and, and, and it's very interesting reading this book from the point of view of an atheist because, because he's really a good person and he has really yeah. good goals and ambitions and, and reasons for being in the church. And, and there's a lot of, uh, other people that are, that are involved in the church who are really, really slimy bad guys in this book. And it's, it's just interesting <laughs> reading this book and seeing, you know, that's what Christianity and religion should be about. And that's what mm-hmm. they say it's about, but they don't practice what they preach. Yeah. You know, and it's really various different parts of this book give you the best and the worst <laughs> of religion. And it's, and it's an interesting, and it's an interesting mm-hmm. thing to read to see, yeah. to see people really doing good things with, with what they're. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't come up often enough. So. <laughs> But let's see. Maybe Phil's got something to say. How you doing? Good, folks. How y'all doing? Hey. Good, good show today. Thank you. Hey, the reason I'm calling is, you know, the recent developments in the news regarding uh, Canada so and their uh, passage of the same-sex marriage thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. I imagine there's differences across the atheist spectrum about whether or not that's good or bad. But I think one thing we can all agree on, as long as it gets Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> you know, so... So what's your take on that? I mean, my understanding is that the main reason folks don't want to have same-sex marriages is because they don't want their gay partners in the hospital making life and death decisions about their their health care, you know, when they get in major accidents and things of that nature, which is yeah. totally outrages me because it seems to me if somebody gets married, they're giving their life into that person's mm-hmm. hand. Their mom and dad and the crazy religious uncle shouldn't run into the hospital room and go, wait a minute, let's not pull the plug. Exactly. Uh-huh. So what, what is your take on that, folks? Well, okay. um, Typically, uh, I, I don't think that's a go- that's a place that government should really be handling. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's my main perspective. Is just that you know, if two people want to get together, with, whether they be you know two women, men, or one of each, if they're happy and it's not hurting anybody else, why not? Well, you know, the thing is, is the Congress and I think Texas legislature both have this, what's called the Defense of Marriage Act. Yeah. Where they're going to try and do this. Then, so I'm, I basically what I'm saying is that first couple that runs to Ontario or Vancouver gets married comes back to the United States and gets into one of these situations, they start waving their Canadian marriage license around, you know, how that's going to pan out. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm not too sure. Well, I'm not too sure. Maybe you can I, legalities. I have I can. no idea. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, first of all, you can do that here in the United States. You can't get legally married, but if you have a same-sex life partner, or even if you just have a friend that you want to be in control of your health decisions, should you ever become incapacitated, you can fill out rights. I mean, you can fill out mm -hmm. um, advance directives. You can fill mm -hmm. out living wills. You can you can take lots of legal measures to make sure that whoever you want to be involved in in your decisions, no power problem. of attorney, you know, uh, uh, as long as you have all of this paperwork in place, um, they they are the ones that are legally enforced to have the decisions, even if you're not married to that person. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this is again, uh, something we talked about on one of the shows I was on when I was talking about mm -hmm. death and atheism. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the some of the measures you can take to make sure that if you have a really religious family that has rejected you for most of your life, then you can, uh, you know, you can still you can okay. still have things, you know, you can still have them so do your funeral the same way. But, but um, I I certainly don't think that that the reason they're trying to make gay marriages in the Americas uh, okay. illegal is because they don't want them to have legal rights as spouses, yeah. but just because they think that being gay is bad and evil and, exactly. and yeah. unbiblical. It, it's based on religious ideas, and it's just based on the idea that, you know, a certain percentage of the population, you that's know, true. most you know, of them just think it's gay, icky. Yeah, um, that's, so. that's true, but, you know, there's a lot of that stuff that the religious folks throw out there that's just plain old bad, but then there's another group of people that go, you know, what about the inheritance, and what about all that rigmarole? We'll let you go, folks. Yeah. Sure. Okay, okay. That's okay. all in. Honestly, if you are going to, I mean, I mean, if it's important to you what decisions have, are made, if your health becomes an issue, if you are no longer able to make your own decisions, go get a lawyer, yeah. go get all those legal documents filled out. It doesn't matter if you're gay, if you're an atheist, if you're somebody's parent, if you're somebody's kid, yeah. uh, take care of that stuff. Yeah. And also, I don't know um, exactly, but I know typically in the U.S. it recognizes uh, legal marriages made in other countries mm -hmm. yeah. on the whole. So if I go to Canada or, you know, Abu Dhabi or something like that and get married, typically that means I'm married over here too. They'll accept that as yeah. a legal document. I don't know how that I, I, would I, happen for... I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time, but Hawaii was talking about passing yeah. a same-sex yes. marriage law where people could get married. And uh, there's... There's a law saying that all states have to respect the uh, legal documents of another state. Like Texas has to rec uh, okay. recognize my uh, high school diploma from Arkansas, or my, okay. you know, and that kind of stuff. So if they but, did, but, but uh, states, in reaction to Hawaii talking about that, reacted by passing legislation saying that they don't have to respect same-sex marriages. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. I don't know if yeah. that was just at a state level, if it yeah. ever went anywhere, because Hawaii, well, it, it couldn't have gone into the appeals court because Hawaii never did pass that law, I don't think, so no one got affected by it. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's kind of a, a really weird situation, one of those ones where you just have to see how it would play out. Exactly, exactly. Because, like I said, I know they normally accept it, but with something like that, I don't know if they would, you know, laugh at it or what. Well, it's um, like, you know, it's a legal document in other countries. So. Well, there's other things like we have the polygamy laws. You can't have been married true. more than one person, and That's people true. do that in other countries. If they came here, they they wouldn't recognize all those marriages. That's so. true. That's true. That's true. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe John can fill us in. How you doing? Yo. Hey. Yeah. What you, uh, what you got for us? Y'all know that Trinity Church coming out of. Uh, California? I uh, haven't heard of it, no. not spe The Trinity Church? Yeah. Not not specifically. Yeah, well, they, they, they uh, de decode the Bible, and they talk about the satellite and the de uh, decoding of the Bible. Yes. Is it is it the Bible code type thing, or are they just interpreting the Bible, or do you know? Well... Because they had the Bible code, which looks back at the ancient Hebrew, and they find... Yeah, and they're Adam. talking about these satellites and the Bible. Yeah. And that, Would that be the uh, Raelians? No, I think, that I, I, think I know what no, you're talking about. The satellites. I, I know think, the satellites that they have out there in space. Yeah, I can't remember exactly which station it is, but one of these Christian networks was actually trying to raise funding 
uh, to have their satellite network go up because they said, look at, you know, the book of, you know, Revelation or something. And they said, you know, angels will fly in the sky, messenger like angels. The, the and Old they took Testament that to mean satellites. Itself. The so, Old Testament. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, TBN, apparently. R right. TBN, um, the Trinity Network. Exactly. Yes. You know, yeah, I and, do remember that. And then be before I went there to the, to the Trinity, before that, when I was a teenager, this other church was totally up, up against the television and everything the television stood for. Yeah. And uh, to find out that the the Bible decoded talks about a satellite. Yeah. And it, it talks about the satellite being like the form of an angel, you know, with wings. Exactly. And that's what those satellites out there are. Yeah. You know, they're out there, yeah. spread, <laughs> you know. So I'm thinking about this old church that I went to as a teenager and that that they were up against the television, everything, even the newspaper, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen that before. I, the one that I used to worship was Jehovah Christ, Christ Jehovah. I never did sit around and worship this guy named Jesus, you know? Yeah. I yeah. sat around and worshiped Christ Jehovah. Yeah. Jehovah had the Old Testament and Christ from uh, Christ. That's yeah. from Greece or Greek. Okay. The name Christ comes from Greek. Okay. But this Jesus, it, it's like the, the name of Jesus, it's a uh, pagan. It's a pagan form of, of a word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but going back to the TV, there's actually, I mean, typically religion's going to be afraid of anything new. I think when barcodes first came out, they were afraid of that as being, you know, the mark of the devil. Right, and then credit right. cards came out, and oh my God, it's the mark of the beast. And now they're talking about, you know, possible, you know, chip implants for your dogs right. that you can get. That's the new mark of the beast. Uh, Actually, I think one of on, my on news stories, the one that, that did statistics on whether or not you need to believe in God in order to be a good person, I think they yeah. also had a statistic on whether or not people believe that TV has been evil. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on its but use. <laughs> if the Bible's going to say that there's an angel out there called the satellite, you know. <laughs> Satellite the when they decoded it, you know. Yeah. Religion yeah. has this great way of taking things in. It's evil until they can use it to prospitalize. <laughs> exactly. Until they figure out how to use it. <laughs> rock music was evil and this the yeah. devil and they were gonna do that. Now you have Christian rock. That's so great. <laughs> yeah. So right. yeah, I remember having a when actually I was in college and passing up one of these but uh, being up against the newspaper, you know, that was that was kind of mind blowing, even as a teenager. Yeah, they didn't even want us to read the newspaper. So, you <laughs> well, know. You get don't it. educate yourself. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know what's going on in the world, you won't know what you're missing. Exactly. Yeah. You'll be happy with your little with your little plight in yeah. life. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have anything else for us? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and he he said himself in the Bible that he was the door. You know, the what's his name? That the the Christ. Okay. He said that he was the door, and I'm wondering which door <laughs> should I go ahead and find? And it also states that you should 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 salute every door you walk through. You know. Okay, I've got too many doors so. in a day to to, to do anything about <laughs> that one. So. So. <laughs> but he clearly states that he is the door. Yeah. Nice. This Christ. Yeah. Christ. Nice. So. Yeah, he is the door, and the other thing about whenever Lord opens a closes the door, he opens a window, and all this kind of all these fun housekeeping jobs that he apparently does. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, uh, do you have anything else? Or Thank okay, you. Thank you well, I just got myself all shook. Up. I'll, talk, I'll call later. <laughs> okay, Thank thanks you. for calling. Bye. Um, yeah, it was actually strange. A while back, there was some guy who was saying that in the he would watch the static on TV the black and white snow that comes on and uh, what they would do is, is he saw demons in it and he would record these demon faces that were watching him and stuff like that and you know dude it's random patterns <laughs> yeah that's kind of so, like you know what was the, monsters in the television what was the controversy over the Lion King what did they see in the clouds of the smoke that was right yeah, they, they've always got they, interpretations they that in something. Disney. Yeah, yeah. Anything. If you look hard yeah. enough, you're going to find what you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Well, we've Actually, got... I once went to Disneyland Anything and else? asked somebody about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and and uh, allegedly yes the me. leaves curl up and it says sex. And they said, actually, no, it's a subliminal message. It says SFX. Uh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay, Gary, how you doing? Yes, uh, I would like to get your uh, opinion about uh, physician-assisted suicide. Uh, I recently heard a news report that I really admire him in, for some of the things he's done, but Attorney General Ashcroft is going after Oregon's uh, law of physician yeah. assistant suicide. He's going to try to knock it down. Yeah. And having a family member that uh, died a terrible death of a terminal yeah. disease, I'm really for physician assisted suicide. And really mm -hmm. dismays me that, you know, Attorney yeah. General Ashcroft is, uh, you know, going to try to knock down the only state in the Union, Oregon, who, who, the people of Oregon passed that law and said they wanted physician-assisted suicide for people that was terminally ill, yeah. and yet he's going after it and trying to, uh, you know, eradicate it. And I'm, I'm very much against that. I just yeah. wanted to get your yeah. opinions about it. Well, it's one of those delicate areas where, in theory, you know, in the theory on how it's supposed to work, I think it's a good idea in general. Um, if there's uh, someone who can, you know, who's terminally ill. They have a painful disease that's going to get worse, and they're going to die from it. If they can make that conscious decision to end their life, I, I can't see any reason why not to. Now, the problem with it is that there's a lot of room for coercion and taking advantage of this, and the family coming to them saying, "Well, you know, you're a burden to us. Kill yourself." Um, mm -hmm. There are there are areas where it could definitely be abused, and that's that's really frightening. But, that, but you know, but, they make. They they do their best at trying to make provisions for those. Is exactly. you have to have you have to be uh, declared competent. You have to be able to make an informed decision on your own. Yeah. You have to have, uh, uh, I think, six months. You have to have a diagnosis of six months to live. You have to have the opinions of two separate doctors. Okay. Um, you have to be informed of all of the different uh, options, <laughs> and. Um, uh, we did a lot of debates on this in, in college. It was always something that came up. And I thought one of the, one of the more compelling arguments is, is kind of the same as if abortion was, a, it was illegal, is that if a, somebody really, really wants to have it, yeah. they're going to do it either way. Yeah, you're gonna find the a question way. is, if they do it themselves and botch the job, they're going to be a lot worse off than if they'd gone to a doctor and done it under medical supervision. And, exactly. You know, yeah, and yeah. there's... There's more at, at stake, though. They don't look at the whole picture. What's worse for a family that's having, has a person who's terminally ill, is, you know, they know they're going to die, they're suffering, they want to end it, and so they go get a gun and they shoot themselves in the head, you know, and can't tell anybody that they're going to do that. Yeah. Or they can go and do it rationally and decide and their family can be there with them, you know. You know, it's kind of like the, the, the abortion thing. An argument for keeping abortion is... Uh, women were still having abortions when it was legal. Exactly. And the only just, what yeah. was happening was women were dying because the jobs were getting botched. Right. They were having it in a back alley exactly. on a dirty on a folding table with a dirty yeah. knife, you know, and yeah. and a little bit of Advil to kill the pain. Yeah. But um, I mean, I mean, I personally, uh, being a social worker, you know, I'm I'm all for uh, hospice and and taking all of the dignity you can in your end of days if you if you have a uh, terminal illness, which is uh, which is going to end your life in like six months or something, doing it with dignity, you know, exploring everything you can within your last couple of days of life. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I've I've experienced very mild amounts of pain <laughs> in my life in comparison to some of these awful things that you yeah. can have, in comparison yeah. to some of these, you know, autoimmune disorders and and things that attack uh, attack your body and and yeah. and. Uh, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily want to suffer for the rest of for the rest of the time that I have left on Earth. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So. I agree very much with the <laughs> statements that you've made uh, from uh, personally experiencing it with a family member, and I I hope the Attorney General Ashcroft. I've written him and hope that he uh, changes his mind about right. it and doesn't yeah. try to overturn Oregon's law. Yeah, that's excellent. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Bye. Yes.
If yes. you have an opinion, write the people in charge. Exactly. Let them know you have an opinion. Exactly, because Ashcroft is not our best friend in the world. <laughs> Actually, um, at least not the atheist. Friend. I don't think it'll so. do any good with Ashcroft because he wasn't elected to anything. He's. I don't well, think he's hope, ever hopefully, been elected, so hopefully, if they have a big public opinion, though, that kind of says, you know, look, we should have this, we shouldn't have that, whatever. Hopefully, at least it'll show him that, you know, well, wow, people don't really agree with me. Well, yeah, yeah. by the fact that he's never <laughs> been elected, he's always been saved by something else. Like, he didn't get the senator position yeah. in in Missouri, I think it was, so Bush made him attorney general. Yeah. If, if, if you can't get public office, that shows that you don't care what public opinion is. Because that's what political, you know, campaigns are about, is yeah. trying to sway the public in your direction. Yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, they say that, that, that the majority of Americans are against, are, are in favor of the war, and the majority of Americans are in favor of President Bush, and the majority of Americans are in favor of faith-based initiatives. But not only has no poll ever, none of these polls that give all these statistics ever called me and asked my opinion, <laughs> but I don't know anybody that that has been called and asked their opinion about these, and most of my friends are against all of these things. And yeah, um, yeah. But also, also remember that we are in a little pocket here called Austin. And nobody calls in, Austin to ask their opinion. Texas. Well, they call the rest of the country, though. So. Yeah, but, you, um. but a news article you had earlier today proves this point in another way. The wording of the polls. The polls don't necessarily exactly. mean anything because slight little things in the wording can influence how people feel and how they answer. So if it, the polls were worded slightly differently, like a lot of the time they'll say, do you approve of President Bush? And they're like, okay, yeah. But if they ask, would you vote for him again? <laughs> you know, those would be no, two well, different it's, it's a difference between asking, do you approve of President Bush or what is your opinion of President Bush? Yeah. You're in true, favor true. of the war, aren't you? Rather than, <laughs> so what is your opinion of the war? Or, yes. or even little how things How much like, do you support the war in Iraq? Exactly. Quite a lot. Oh, not true. very much. <laughs> or if, even like simple things. If you say, uh, do you think the war in Iraq is just? More people will say yes then. What do you think of the war in Iraq? Because yeah. it's suggestive. That's why when they do psychological yeah. tests and they're, you know, developing these tests, they have to balance the test yeah. where a certain of, uh, amount of them push toward positive answers and a certain amount of them push toward negative answers and they conflict to see if you're just going with the flow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, being a geek, I once heard about uh, this one poll that they did actually when Microsoft was having all their problems with uh, being sued and, you know, monopolies and stuff like that. And Microsoft put out one of these phone polls, and, and the questions were so obviously leading. Um, it was like, you know, do you believe that the government should have, have its finger in every aspect of business, yes or no? <laughs> it's like, how can you possibly answer that correctly? <laughs> yeah. So, so when you get polls like that, you need to you not only, oh, well, it answered this. Well, let's see what the question said. Yeah. So don't don't ever take polls straight up. You want to see mm -hmm. the question they actually asked. Or you want to see who who is who is asking the question. Well, I mean, uh, because it's not only that, because sometimes people with good intentions don't mean to word a question mm -hmm. in a leading way, but it just accidentally happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you need to see is the actual question that was asked in a poll. Yeah. Take some effort to write good non-leading questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chloe, how you doing? Hey. Hi. Hey, how are you? Uh, quite well. Um, I have been watching this show for, I'd say, like, I'd get about five minutes into it on about, you know, five or six different sessions, and I've always noticed that at the end of your discussions, you end up talking about either anti-religious material or politics, right? Okay. And, um... <laughs> Things to never talk about your family with. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that maybe to be a truly atheist show instead of more of an anti-religious thing, okay. they could get more, you know, interviews with atheists, what it means to be atheist, yeah. not more why you aren't Christian specifically. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we have had discussions on that before, um, trying to bring it back to what is, the name of the show is The Atheist Experience, talking a bit more about what it is and what it's like to be atheist in a very religious right. society and such. Um, and we do have those occasionally, not all that often. Typically, it's a lot of it is caller-driven. And so it's what people call in and talk about. And so a lot of them will call in and say, well, how can you not believe in God? Or where do your morals come from? Whatever. 
Um, and a lot of that just goes back to trying to, you know, decide, well, religion isn't the best way to do these things. We think we have a different way that works a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And but so, but or, the other thing is, I mean, it's it's a little bit harder to, to have a show that talks about, that talks exclusively about atheism because atheism isn't... No. Isn't isn't an organized thing? Isn't atheism isn't a, 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 a an institution? I mean, a philo- a it's not philosophy. like saying, well, what's it like to be a be a Christian? As a Christian, what do you believe? As a Christian, you know, what are the rules that you live by? Because atheists, atheism is basically a lack of religion. So, I mean, we've got atheists who are libertarians. We've got atheists who are Democrats. We've got atheists who are liberals and and conservatives. And we've got atheists who are vegetarians and atheists who eat meat. We've got atheists who you know, are, 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 are gamers and atheists who are athletes. And, and yeah. so we don't all necessarily follow a certain set of rules and we don't all necessarily follow a certain doctrine. So, I mean, basically as an atheist, all you can really talk about is, well, I'm still a good person and this is why. Uh, and, and this is my take on, 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 on all of these different political issues and all of these different news stories and all these different articles in science, which, which are, have nothing to do with religion <laughs> because so many people who are religious um, look at everything from a religious angle. They look at the, the creation of the world from a religious angle. They, they look at the, the function of government from a religious angle. And, uh, and yeah. I don't know. Typically, as the group, as the atheist community of Austin, we all agree that there is no God which is what atheism is. Outside of that, it is free game. And if you get on our email list, (laughs) if you get on our email list, you will see that we debate and argue about everything else. Everything. There are some atheists (laughs) who are smokers, and there are some atheists who are not smokers. (laughs) So it it covers Um, the gamut. Yeah, I just want to say something. It's kind of like, instead of maybe trying to, like, prove yourselves and kind of try to, you know, place atheists in every, you know, Lies of society, so to say. It, like, in a way you're doing that, it kind of reminds me of, like, uh, an, a gay activist. They're like, well, there's gay senators, there's gay books, blah, 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 on and on. But more of, like, not so much, <laughs> I don't know, uh, how to live, yeah. like, based on society's prejudice towards, mm-hmm. you exactly. know, well, not... Yeah, promote ourselves rather than tear them down. Well, see, part of the big thing with atheist groups is the only thing that brings us together is the common disbelief. And, And a lot of the reason we come together is because of the things we've had to deal with with religion. And... Like, this group was a great thing for me to come into because I learned to be around, you know, I learned, you know, how other atheists do things and, uh, and also how to get together to go after, uh, you know, or fight back against the religious group. So when we talk about a lot of religious things, a lot of the times that's because people need to be informed about what the religious people are trying to do in this country. Well, um, alright, I've always been an atheist too. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've been to many different kinds of services yeah. that were basic on worshiping a figure. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Methodist, Pentecostal, uh, Primitive Baptist, uh, Hindu, Cantonese, you know. Yeah. And I don't find anything really negative in the pure form of uh, right. the in religion, the but it's the perversion of it. Right, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. still an atheist, but I don't try to... Put down other exactly. Well, yeah. it's well, if you'll notice, most of the time when stories come on, it's about a particular individual or a you know a particular group that is trying yeah. to do this certain thing. It's not usually it's, trying, a, it's not attacking yeah. the religion as a whole. It's attacking not, and I wouldn't even say attacking, but informing and 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 discussing the actions of individuals and what they're they are doing in the name of religion or what they're trying to push on others in the name of their religion and yeah yeah well and it's and it's trying to and and generally all these stories are 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 religious entities that are trying to force their beliefs upon other groups and upon everybody in the world regardless of what they believe like all of these uh all of these abortion stories i mean someone was asking me earlier today what does abortionism have to do with atheists do all atheists believe that you should be pro-choice or pro-life and no they don't but most most 
most um, arguments that are pro-life are religious-based, and and as atheists, for, I mean, I mean, as people who um, who we don't necessarily fit into this common category of everybody else, and we don't want to have their morals and values forced upon us, we also don't think we we also kind of sympathize with other people that we don't think they should force their morals and values upon other people. I mean, we don't think that that uh, people who who you know have been victims of rape or incest or whatever should have to live up to this Christian ideal of of murdering a fetus is is murdering a, a human life. But in the same way, you have those minimal aspects of the show that are somewhat promotional yeah. Yeah. towards atheism. That's true. And yeah. that's like, to me, my inner definition of religion is that somebody's most active, obsessed with somebody's religion could be a motorcycle or, yeah. you know, Jesus, whatever have you. Yeah. And in the same way, you're trying to put this stance of atheism out there mm-hmm. in the same way as the Christians. Yeah. Yeah. In a, a little aspect of the yeah. show, what I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I don't pretend to, you know, really know y'all's platforms or anything, because yeah. I haven't watched it steadily over. Yeah. To get a more broad mm-hmm. aspect of the show, but that's just... Yeah. I don't know. I just finally decided to call it seven eighty yeah. in my life. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> I'm just trying to maybe help, I don't know, just yeah. improve yeah. kind of the way people see yeah. an atheist, because people do watch this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and again, going back to an earlier caller, we're saying that we generally try and be, you know, as nice and as, as nice as possible, I guess. And imposing. Rather than just, you know, yelling at them and ber- right. berating them because that just encourages their view that atheists are, you know, unhappy, mean people. And, you know, I've made the same complaint from si- from time to time when I've watched yeah. the show when various different hosts or co-hosts or guests have yeah. been on the show and there's a little bit too much, you know, Christian Jeez. bashing going on. Yeah, exactly. And that's really not what atheism is about. We're yeah. not here to just say everybody else in the world well, is evil and we're right because, I mean, that's... Well, and see that, but that goes back to the only thing we have in common is that we don't believe in right. a, a god because exactly. everybody has their different view on how you should do it and how, you know, how politically active you should be, how, you know, everything. The only thing that unites us is that. So of course you're going to get different viewpoints from different atheists and different ideas because we don't have a platform. We just we're just here. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to. Say we should have a platform? <laughs> no, okay. Um, I was, I'm just kind of, to show you what I, I've stayed yeah, only yeah. five minutes of this program for yeah. like a month, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm just trying to sh- tell you what it seems yeah. to yeah. people and not okay. yeah. atheists. Okay. Because when talking to you, it seems like you're not corrupted in any way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, yeah, well. I, I'm still. I'm not trying to attack you or anything. I'm just no. 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 Sure what I think. Definitely right. welcome any feedback on the show that we ever get. Sure, man. It's nice talking to you. Right? So, okay. Thank thanks you for calling. Bye. So yeah, we get feedback every now and then on the show. Yeah. Couple, somebody actually wrote to the email, the TV at atheist-community dot org. If you want to yell at us there, do that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, we got somebody on there who is just. Yeah, I think it was a little bit confused about where we're coming from and what the show is basically for. Um, but right. yeah, like I say, we, it's... And that's, you know, and that's that's why we have callers calling in, and they can ask us whatever they want. They can ask exactly. us, what, are, what is our opinion on this? What is our opinion on that? Exactly. And, and why do we have a TV show? And and uh, and we do, I mean, we do have functions outside of just, you know, yeah. uh, talking about how everybody else in the world is wrong. And certainly we don't ever <laughs> proselytize. We, yeah. we, we aren't, I mean, we yeah. aren't on a mission to convert everybody yeah. else. We are on a mission to get other people to think rationally and logically, take facts into consideration. Exactly. Um, and to be tolerant. And to, and to yes. be tolerant, definitely to be tolerant. Um, and uh, um, we, we, I mean, we occasionally... Uh, make an appearance at, at pep rallies and protests and different marches and, and such. Yeah, different marches. Yeah. As a group, we do kind of go out and try to make a presence and try to try to share an opinion and and be involved in political rallies and and um. Yeah, yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh aha. We have. Hello, Jeff. How you doing? Hi guys. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, when I called in, the uh, previous caller was. I, I thought that what she was asking for is a more of a discussion of you know what atheism is and more of a focus on 
on our on our point of view and what you know what we have to offer and that sort of thing. Okay. Which is why I called in. But by the end of the call, it seemed like <laughs> it was she was criticizing the uh, the practice of of you know trying to convert others. And I, I don't understand how you can how you can attempt to explain your uh, you know what's good about your own viewpoint without by inference criticizing automatically everybody out there that that has a different viewpoint. So now I don't really know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the major the, the major point there was uh, do we say that atheism is good because of, you know, these three reasons or do you say that, you know, Christianity right. is bad because of these three reasons? Or, or she was also um, just suggesting that we have more uh, guests on the show who talk about atheism and atheist exactly. perspectives. For example, from time to time, uh, my father, Dr. Alan Glasser, who's a scientist in Los Alamos, New Mexico, comes yes. on to the show. He is a, he is a uh, lifelong atheist. He's a third generation atheist um, and uh, in Los Alamos, New Mexico they have a humanities class where they uh, uh, for two hours every day they uh, they um, uh, have for, for part of this class, a large part of this class is focused on religion and is focused on um, um, just informing people about all the different religions and he has been invited for the last like 10 years to be the atheist speaker and he goes and he informs them about atheism and what it's about and what it is and what it means and and kind of you know what we believe and where we come from and why we're still moral people even though we don't believe in god yeah. and it's a very very good class and i'm very proud to say that i went to a high school where they're willing to teach what atheism is about in their religion section yeah. and i think that's kind of what she was saying is we need to do a little bit more of that on the show yeah, yeah. It goes back also, um, something I brought in the show, which I'm probably not going to get to, but The Collapse of Evolution, this book. Um, a lot of creationists uh, typically have the argument that uh, evolution is wrong because, you know, look at the improbabilities of, you know, these molecules just forming into a cell and all these bad arguments. And uh, it's essentially just saying evolution is, is wrong because of these reasons. Mm -hmm. And therefore, creationism wins, wins by default. Uh, we can't really do the same thing. We can't say that Christianity is bad, therefore atheism wins by default. You know, we kind of got to promote atheism right. to a certain well, extent. Well, I think what we can say, and, I, and I've had numerous email exchanges. And, and <laughs> exchanges yes. Uh, and, and if you want to come and you want to learn more about it and, and learn more about the atheist group, you can always come to the bagel shop exactly. on Sundays. And uh, you can you can meet with a you know with a fairly good sized group of atheists that just talk about anything and everything, and you can ask or us questions. You can even uh, we have a listserv on Yahoo that's ask an atheist that people exactly. can come on, uh, get on the email, and and just yeah. ask us Debate questions, whatever they want to yeah. ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but you were saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're, you're you were pointing out that 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 whole idea that if it's uh, the the uh, false dichotomy. Yeah. Uh, Logical fallacy that that you know you, you characterize any uh, any issue as either one or the other, yeah. and then argue that the other is wrong. Therefore, your side wins. Yeah. Right. Well, if there are in fact more than two different viewpoints, and that's not true. But I think what we can say is that uh, if a uh, if one if one viewpoint on a subject is false, right. The, 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 the side that is that you've got to uh, accept rationally, whatever it happens to be, is the one that is actually supported by the evidence. We can say that. It doesn't mean yes. that, it yes. doesn't mean that that is for sure absolutely necessarily right. Of because course. We're, we're not omniscient. We yeah. just don't know everything. Yeah. But it's a better choice. We're stuck uh, picking the optimal course through you know the ev evidence that we have. Yes. And uh, and we need to have a certain amount of um, of willingness to uh, to step back from previous assumptions and go off in a different direction if new evidence comes to light that says we need to go in this direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, you know, I think I think that's what we can say. Not that we not that we are offering some alternative viewpoint that we're going to claim is the absolute truth with the capital T, like yeah. like the religious folks like to do, but that we that. that our motive in life, our motivation, is to find whatever is the the best currently, uh, you know, the the answer that is most 
uh, strongly supported by the current evidence. Yeah, and I think what Carla was saying. can do ever. Yeah, and I think what the caller was saying was, l let's try and focus on that. Let's focus on what are the answers we found, what are the methods we found, yeah. rather than just saying that, you know, everything else is wrong. Right. And not well, backing up our position. Well, that's it. I mean, uh, to, to get then to the subject of why I'm an atheist, I'm an atheist because it occurred to me that the time to believe a thing is after the weight of evidence uh, indicates that it's probably true, yeah. and not before. Right, yeah. uh, and that—that's really it. I mean, if you say we had uh, atheist uh, candidates running for political office, right? Well, the only thing you can say about them is, well, that's a guy who's not going to have decided, uh, regardless of the evidence, to believe some certain thing just because he was told that you have to be a—you have to believe that certain thing in order to be a good person, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that, that, it doesn't sound very impressive, but it's actually quite a good thing. Yeah. You know, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's all I had to say. Okay. Well, thanks for calling. All right, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Yes, more plugs for the bagel shop. Always a good thing. So, yes, what would Scooby do? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody brought that to the bagel shop this morning, and it was just too good to pass up. So, all right. We have Robert. How you doing? Hey, what's up? Hey. What you got for us? Uh, I just wanted to know if you guys are atheists, why are you guys preaching on, well, not preaching, but why are you guys uh, talking on Sunday? Um, it's our day off of work. We have nothing better to do on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> and it's when we got a time slot. Exactly. It's when we get a time slot. It's when we're off work and available to do show. And it's when everybody else is sitting at home watching their TVs. Yeah, I was just flipping through it. Well, <laughs> exactly. I anyways. Period. What is that? Uh, so, uh... What's this about, like, if you're not good or something like that? Something about the other guy that was talking about was, uh, he said something about being Catholic or, I'm uh, not being Catholic, uh, being a, uh, like, if you're in office. Okay. Okay. So, if you know the response or something like that. Well, we were talking about Ashcroft a little bit earlier, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Being in political office. Yeah, political office. Okay. Okay, well, what does it have to do with religion? Well, if you're making decisions for the community and for the people that you are governing and you're basing those on religion, which has a pretty shaky foundation on re regarding facts, then maybe that's not the best thing in the world. If you're going to base your decisions based on, you know, what your, your holy book says and your holy book isn't true, then do we really want to base decisions, you know, that's going to affect society on that? Mm -hmm. Or your holy book disagrees with everybody else's holy book, or everybody exactly. else's yeah. lack of a holy book. Exactly. Okay, how were you guys born? Human. Human? <laughs> yeah, human. Um, human from what? Yep. Yeah, um, My mommy and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and their mommy and daddy. Yeah, I was actually raised religious. Um, I know Karen was raised atheist, and Andy? I'm... I was raised religious. Okay, yeah. So yeah, most people in the group, I think it's probably about two thirds in the group, were probably Everybody raised that religious. Everybody grows up, they choose their own religion, or yeah. not to have religion, or not to have religion. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I'm like, see, I went to prison once. Okay. 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 And a couple of dudes, because I didn't go to throughout my whole years. Okay. I didn't go to church or anything like that. Okay. They thought I was an uh, atheist. Yeah. They picked the religion for me. <laughs> they so sent you to jail like, because they thought you were an atheist? Yeah. So. Okay, as far as I've heard, that isn't a crime, at least not yet. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. <laughs> and, and we're kind of hoping not because, you know, we're kind of screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but, uh, you no, know, they were trying to name, name me or something like yeah. that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you weren't currently attending church and they had nothing else to call you and they had to fit you into a category when they put you in jail, yeah. then I suppose they would have called you an atheist. Um, but yeah. um, about the that's kids. definitely a stigma. Yeah, yeah. Atheism definitely has a lot of baggage that goes along with the word and term if you claim to be an atheist. It's definitely got baggage associated with it that we don't really agree with for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. So... But 
I mean, I'm an atheist, and I've never committed any kind of crime. And Andy exactly. was saying earlier that they're, atheists are underrepresented in prisons. Very uh, up <laughs> underrepresented. Yes, we're, we kind of, we're kind of proud of that title. Proud of being atheist. Just, so people that don't, don't understand you being an atheist, and then they want to name me an atheist, so they're other religious fanatics or something like that? Yeah. Well, they could be. I could be. Some people are just really stuck on the idea of categorizing everybody yeah, and placing them into a little slot. And if you can't identify yourself with a particular religion, then they'll call you an atheist, which yeah. is very much not true. I mean, you yeah. can consider, yeah. you can, you cannot believe in organized religion, but you can still, um, you can still believe in God. There's plenty of people out there that do that. Um, and, uh, uh, that doesn't necessarily make you an atheist. That that certainly doesn't make you an atheist. Because if you believe in God, then you're not an atheist, whether yeah. or not you attend church. Yeah. Came up recently. A lot of our population, not our groups, but just you know, general population of the country is apatheistic. Apatheistic. Don't try it. Don't really care. <laughs> doesn't affect their daily life, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> got anything else for us? No. Okay. Are you still there? Thank you. Okay. Thanks for calling. Bye. All right. Five minutes left, and we have Larry. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Actually, the, the last caller, I believe, answered my question. Okay. Um, my question was, is I, I know you obviously don't believe in, in the Bible or anything like that, yeah. but uh, uh, was your point that, that you believe in no God? Yes. Believe in no God. No. There is no God. Yeah. Okay, no, okay, no, okay. No. Not exactly. Yeah, that, uh, there is that, no power in the universe. That goes back to the, to the hard versus soft atheism. Atheism is the lack of a belief in any gods. It is not the belief that there is no God. It, it's uh, the lack of a belief versus a belief in something. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, you know, I, I've, I've long thought that uh, that the organized religions of the world have been have basically been our most of our problem. I mean, if you look at uh, Israel and Jerusalem and um, and uh, the Palestinians yeah. and the, the Arabs and and everybody seems to be fighting over over who believes in what. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's hideous. It, it turns everybody off. Um, yeah. The Bible the Bible has been rewritten so many times that. You can't count on anything that it says. Yeah. Um, most most people follow the uh, what is it, the King James version, which yeah. by its very definition was rewritten by King James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, is neat. it is. It is supposed to be one of the better translations, but but even if you get away from just you know organized religion and Christianity versus you know other sects versus you know complete other religions um, just the idea of a higher power typically doesn't stand up to any you know any reason or fact or anything like that so yeah while you know Christianity may not be the best religion it doesn't mean that there's still you know some higher power being out there um, yeah. some warm fuzziness so. Yeah, I mean, it, it, well, in, in science, you look at you look at the universe, and there has to be something beyond our understanding at this point. Certainly, we well, don't deny yeah, that there's something we don't understand. Yeah, we, there's we a lot of stuff we don't know. Absolutely, yeah. never ever claim to know everything. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, forty years ago, we, we didn't haven't have figured it all out. Yeah. Forty years, we yeah, we know a lot more now than we knew forty years ago, and we're going to continue to learn more. That doesn't sure. necessarily mean we'll ever figure it all out. But we're not going to go out of our way to make up answers to questions that we don't understand yet just because we don't have the answer. Exactly. Great. Cool. That, 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 that puts, puts things in perspective. I, I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sean. Peace. Yeah, that hard and soft atheism, uh, we had one caller that kept calling us up a couple times saying that, you know, so atheism is the lack of a, or is the belief in the lack of any gods. And we went on a loop about 30 or 40 times, um, and he just never would get it. Um, this is a guy that actually called in last week at the very yeah. end. And, uh, yeah, I think and that argument is kind of trying to, to, to catch us into a trap where we're saying, well, exactly. we believe that there is th no there, God. we have to believe in a God in order to believe that there isn't one. No. Yeah, <laughs> no, they, they do sometimes make that. Well, you're there talking about God, therefore you must believe in God. Exactly. And now exactly. we can talk about Santa. The other corner yeah. they try to paint you into is 
you say you don't believe in my God because I can't show proof, but you're saying there is no God and you can't show there's proof. So if you make a positive exactly. assertion, then exactly. you're re- you need to back that yeah, assertion right. up. So and we so don't they try to back yeah. you assertively in believe. I mean, some atheists assertively believe that there is no God. Exactly. But most atheists just... Yeah. yeah. We certainly logic- don't believe that there is something. Yeah, we cannot logically defend okay. the idea that there is no God. God could be hiding out under a rock in Missouri. Little chance of that, but it's possible. And if Theoretically. He, if he is, so. uh, show me some proof and I'll start believing. Or he exactly. could be hovering in our doorway. Exactly. <gasps> <laughs> we'll find out when we salute it on the way out. So, Okay, that is it for this week. Uh, had a great show. Uh, we still have one person on the line, it looks like, who we're not going to get time to get to. But again, you can always uh, email us at tv at atheist-community.org. Uh, like I say, we love getting letters from people. We love replying to it. That's you know, we do this show every week, and we'll read your letters on the air. Um, meanwhile, everybody have a great week. Hope everything goes good for you. There's our love rings going out to Austin. Atheist viewers, you rock. And uh, theists, we, we don't, don't hate, hate you. you. We, we just think, think you're wrong. wrong. Goodbye, everybody.